Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing well. Trying a new type of format for this video, which is kind of going to be like a Q&A. So I went through a couple comments and questions that I thought were particularly relevant or they came up often. Just going to try to knock a lot of them out in this video because hopefully they're helpful for everyone. So just random questions I found, no particular order. Didn't even write a script for this video, so going to kind of freestyle, but Let's see how it goes. All right, let's do it. I can understand the syntax of most programming languages, but I still can't code. So just this question itself, uh, this is for everyone who's actually a pure, pure beginner just trying to get into software. And I can tell when people ask questions like this, they really are like the pure green field beginners. And I think my only piece of recommendation for people like this is that watching my videos or just looking at YouTube is not really how you're going to learn how to program and you just should find a curriculum. So finding a curriculum, you can go about it many ways. You can just find a free one online, find a paid one online, try to get to a school. But overall, when you're that noob, you need some kind of structure to help you. So I guess instead of going around asking how to get started, I don't know where to begin, just find a program. Doesn't matter, just find a program, all right? So you need a little bit of structure just to get going. So that's that question. If I know C sharp, do I know Java? If I know Java, do I know C sharp? So short answer is straight up no. You, If you know Java, you don't know C sharp. Um, I know what people mean by this question, like they take languages that are very similar and they try to compare them and see, oh, I know one, so it just means I know the other. This is 100% obviously not the case because they're different languages. You know, they might share some similarities, share some influences, but you either know one language or the other. So you could pick it up faster. Maybe you can pick up Scala really fast because you've done Java for your whole life, but I wouldn't say you can just say, I know Scala because I've done Java for a long time. It's inaccurate. So don't say that, don't think that, and just learn both languages. All right, let's just keep it moving. Uh, next question. I was just wondering what programming languages you enjoy using the most. Okay, short answer. Uh, probably let's do a short answer and a long answer to this question. Short answer is that out of the few positions I've held, I thought the most fun in terms of software development was probably using uh, C++. And the reason why I thought it was a little more fun was that I thought that language, or maybe it was just my experience using that language, it was the closest to really hardcore like software design skills. It was like, we were focused a lot on pure software design. It was like 30 engineers trying to design a system and C++ really was like, allowed us to do very specific things, design very specific patterns, do things very custom. So I know I thought it was the most fun from a software perspective, but obviously C++ is not the language of choice for a wide variety of different other applications. You know, companies that like to do web apps or mobile apps are obviously gonna use different languages from that. So depending on what you need to do, you have to pick the appropriate language. I just personally thought C++ was a little more fun. All right, so that's that. Oh, that guy has a sweet name. Um, what is the difference between software developer and software engineer? Oh yeah. So this question comes up a lot. What is the difference between a software developer, software engineer, coder, programmer? Um, I think I've answered this maybe already in another video, but I honestly can say that don't think about these titles too much. They really are supposed to mean similar things, like use your programming skills to solve a problem and help a company, help yourself, help do something with your programming skills, all right? So the act of coding or programming is a skill in, it, in itself, right? If you're a software developer, not only do you have to code, but you have to do many other things. So. Think of coding as just a pure skill to have and don't dwell on these titles too much, all right? So overall, it's just some person, you can solve problems, make people's lives easier with your technical capabilities, which 
One of them happens to be coding, all right? So don't think about it too much. You look like rice gum. So sorry, this is not a question, but I just put it on this list because I thought this guy was saying I look like food and I looked up rice gum and it's not a food, it's just another YouTuber who's super famous and I guess I look like him, all right? So irrelevant, but I spent like a couple minutes looking up that thing thinking it was food. So next question. How, how long does it take to learn your first programming language? So this is another question that you can't really put a time limit to. Obviously the longer of time you spend using and programming with a particular language, you're gonna learn about it a lot more, all right? Um, I guess just to give a little bit of a story, I first saw C, C was my first programming language. I first saw it in like 2003 or 2004. I think I was a junior or something in high school. I took a class about intro to C. I sucked at the class. I understood it up to like four loops. Then we got into pointers and it like confused the hell out of me at the time. Um, I think my mom helped, out, helped me out a lot with all those labs in high school. Um, I started actually understanding programming in college using homeworks, labs, using C to like do all my, you know, projects, coding projects. But I wouldn't say I really even mastered the language through academics. I think when I really got a good grasp on C was when my first couple of years on the job as an embedded developer and I was using it a lot, like using C a lot, getting into the details, doing some tricky things with it. So that was in like 2010, 2011. I first saw it in 2004. So first programming language, seven years. So good luck. Next question is, my computer says not enough RAM when nothing is open at all. Help please. So first, just to get it out of the way, just because you have nothing open doesn't mean you have nothing running on your computer. You have less things running, but there's a lot of things that run, a lot of processes that the operating system is running all the time that you don't physically see, all right? And while you're, the reason why your computer is probably blowing up is because you're running out of resources. So remember that every program that runs on your computer takes resources, and if the program is written not very well, it's not gonna use the resources well, and it's even gonna waste the resources. If you hear of things like memory leaks, those are just software problems. So a long time ago when I think Chrome was first coming out, it was pretty notorious for eating a lot of resources. And if you left Chrome open too long, your computer was effed. So a lot of the times you're just like, all right, just stop, restart Chrome, your computer should be okay. But overall, remember, every single program you're running is written by humans. They're not perfect. They're probably eating away at resources. And that's why you kill those processes or you restart your computer, all right? So just because nothing is open doesn't mean nothing is using resources on your computer. So worst case scenario, just restart it and you know, keep going. How long, how do you know all these things? I don't know many things. I just try to explain them well. How old are you? I'm 28, all right? Next question. Okay, this question's a little long. Um, Hi Dave, thanks for the video. I have a question not relative to Agile, but still in computer science. I have a problem with changing languages and tools between semesters, I guess. Um, so I guess the major gist of this question, sorry, I'm not gonna read out it completely just cause it's a little long, but it's kind of being frustrated or having it being challenging, doing a little context switching, switching from one language to another language, one framework to another framework across semesters. I just wanna say that while this might seem bad in school, um, you're always gonna be context switching between various projects and usually it's very hard to work on multiple things at the different times. So you do switch every now and then. Like there's a reason why people don't do iOS and Android. One developer doesn't do both of those at the same time because if you're an iOS developer, you're so used to that environment, it's not really convenient or even practical to just, oh, let me just jump over to Android in the afternoon. Let me jump back over to iOS in the night. I'll jump back in the morning. So <clears throat> context switching always happens, but even in real life, you do spend 
certain amounts of time focused on certain frameworks because it's not really good to always be context switching. Nevertheless, even though it's not good to switch a lot, you do have to get used to it. So as you start accumulating knowledge from languages, different frameworks, like different environments of development, you'll be able to learn how to adapt to various different environments. It's always gonna suck to switch over, but you still have to get used to switching over, all right? So practically, it's not really good to switch all the time, but you still have to learn how to do it. All right, last question. How can one reach out to you if I have any questions that's kind of one-on-one? -on -one? Um, if there's any type of one-on-one -on -one question, I will answer it, but it's, I prefer if you send me an email. I'll just put my email again in the description. Um, please, I'd rather somebody send me an email that's kind of well thought out, well written, and I'll respond to that than getting like random Facebook messages. So, I mean, I love Facebook. Thank you, I appreciate you guys adding me on Facebook, but to respond, I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna try to respond on email just cause it's a little, it's more convenient, all right? So that's all. If you need to contact me, I prefer do it on email or just actually a comment is perfect too, all right? Just Facebook Messenger, mm, not too much, all right? All right guys, that was uh, just the list of questions I had accumulated today. Obviously, um, this video is a little bit more freestyle. I just wanted to like knock a couple questions out of the park. If those questions were on anyone else's mind, hopefully I hit them. Um, maybe I'll do this again after I accumulate another set of good questions. I'll make another video like this, just trying to diversify a bit and hope this video was helpful. All right, so I'll see everyone next week and take care.